how are you all doing out there? Uh, lovely to see you all again. Welcome to all those new people who have stumbled across my uh, channel, either through my Instagram post or just by general YouTube searching. Hello. And hello to all of those people who have uh, returned watching again. Nice to see you all again. Looking a little confused. I think I might know why. Yeah, that's a very different opening title, isn't it? No, don't worry, that's not going to be the new title for every piece of um, video I put up. This is very specific to my Foundations for Field 2023 competition. Um, I wanted to make it this a clear delineation between this competition entry and everything else that I do on my channel. Um, just to give everybody a chance to know if this is not what you want to do, not what you're interested in, that's perfectly fine. If you hear that piece of music, which is Beethoven's Pastoral, then you know this may not be the video for you. Similarly, if you're new here and you're following me just for my Foundations Reveal competition, if you happen to click on to another video and you hear a completely different piece of music, then you know you're in my other part of the channel. And again, if that's not for you, that's fine too. You know, we're all grown-ups here. We like what we like and we don't always like what we don't like. So please don't feel obliged to follow me on everything that I do if that's not what you want. I shall still be putting these videos out, regardless. So, what am I doing? What am I making? All in good time. Um, this video is basically going to be setting everything out that I'm going to make. Um, my inspiration, we're going to talk about the patterns, we're going to talk about the fabrics, and probably talk a little bit about any of the fancy bits I'm going to try and um, sneak in there as well. Um, eyes bigger than my belly always. Run before I can walk? Oh yes. but. What's the point in not trying, eh? Go big or go home? Although well, I'm actually still home, so <laughs> that does bad bit doesn't work. So what is an urban bird of paradise? Well first off, what's a bird of paradise? Well, they are very, very colourful, very pretty birds residing in the Southeast Asian, East Australian um, part of the world, uh, range in sizes, um, and are actually quite close relatives to the crows and ravens of this world. They're part of the Corvid family. I didn't know that myself, actually, until I had a quick look up. Pretty interesting. Um, they are often known, especially the males, for some of their most beautiful plumages that they've got going. Remarkable bird, the Norwegian blue. Beautiful plumage, isn't it? Did you hear that? Um, but anyway, very beautiful feathers, um, some of them can be amazing mimics. Actually, it's not anything at all. I made it up, I just like the title. Um, but if we think about colourful feathers um, and mimicry and Raja, um, what do we get? Well, you can get pigeons could be actually very colourful. Yeah, well, they can be. Come on, but, you know, don't, don't be so disparaging on the old pitch. Um, parakeets are often very kind of colourful as well. What about starlings? What about a common Eurasian starling, hey? Ooh. That is what I have based my um, Foundations Revealed competition on. The competition is based on the natural world. Very open, very open title. And I decided I wanted to do something around the iridescence and colour of um, creatures. And I originally maybe thought about doing something around bioluminescence. Um, I also considered um, something along the lines of squid or cuttlefish. And I just thought, well, how's I how am I going to visually do that? I mean, what, what fabrics would I need to work with? And given that some of the iridescent stuff, excuse me, he's just eating, um, the iridescent fabrics that are out there, they can be an absolute nightmare to work with. I was like, oh, you know what, let, let's, let's not do that. Let's not torture myself on this. Let's think a bit more. What else is there? So I started thinking about the iridescence of feathers and I've always liked starlings we don't I, we have a few that live in the area and not many we don't get the huge murmurations that you um, can sometimes see on TV or if you're lucky to see it yourself it's they, they can be pretty spectacular thousands of birds flying in complete unison and the, the, the image the shapes that they pull it's like like an ink in the air so I am basing my competition entry on starlings 
and uh, notably the almost like the oil slick colors on their feathers so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and talk about patterns and then we'll talk about fabrics so what is my main pattern well it's foundations revealed um i did enter the competition in 2020 and um, i went full out I, I did a full edwardian outfit top to bottom inside out <laughs> i spent months making it um and like so many others during lockdown um there were a lot of entries uh, i think there were about 600 and something in the end um so that was a a, a big inc a big increase for them so I didn't get anywhere, that's okay. I, I enjoyed making it, but I also felt that I maybe went a little bit overboard. Hmm. Overboard more? <laughs> yeah, I did. So I wanted to enter it in, into the competition again, purely because I just like making special occasion stuff. I don't go to the corsets in my time. Um, not very good ones. The last one was probably, <laughs> probably one of the worst ones. Um, but I'm not letting that stop me. So, I am going to be making a corset out of this. It is Mandy Barrington Stays and Corsets. I am going to be making the 1890 Wasp Waist Corset. Now, when I first decided on that pattern, I thought, ooh, maybe I could do something along the lines of a wasp. Now, if you're not mad keen on insects or wasps, um, I'll put a timestamp up here as to where to skip along to, because I know what it's like when you've got a phobia about keeping cool things. So I'll, I'll try and spare you, but that's the skip ahead if you don't want to hear about it. Um, and I had a look around and I wanted to see, you know, not just your average common or wasp. Um, I wanted to see what other wasps were out there and there have been some beautiful wasps. I didn't even realize it could come in such colors, even in the UK. Um, you know, a tiny northern European island. Yeah, you know, you don't normally get you know really bright, beautiful um, creatures. But there was something called the ruby, ruby-tailed wasp. Um, it's a parasitic wasp, um, and it comes. It lives in the UK, um, and it had this beautiful bright pink bottom, hence the ruby, um, but also like a blue into yellow body. Now. I thought initially that as a wasp waist, you know, playing on the, the word wasp, wasp waist, wasps. Um, I even found some lovely shot purple blue uh, to pink silk, um, and I found some another another kind of a blue um, blue to red silk as well to go on the top. But I was looking at it thinking that's not quite right. It needed to be blue to yellow and i couldn't find anything online not that i could find cheaply or readily available and then i started thinking well corsets have a lot of seams and do i want extra seams on the waistline just to kind of show the the, the you know the top and the bottom and i kind of thought you know what we're trying to keep this simple you really went completely overboard at the last competition let's let, let's let's bring you back in so that's when I decided back on the starling um, idea so so I shall be recreating that shape I mean it's actually got feathers as part of the flossing anyway so it, it's it, it lends itself very well um, this is also uh, not just a bone but corded corset so I will be certainly upping my game in terms of corsetry um, I initially thought about not doing all the cording but my idea has morphed slightly um, I do have a Pinterest board based on the idea so if you're interested I'll link it below just to have a look I don't update it that often um, I can't really do too many social media platforms but if you're interested it'll be down below so I'm going to be doing it, be making it with a spoon busk. I've never um, sewn with a spoon busk before. Should be a, should be a challenge. But the cording, definitely. Um, and to kind of, so what's, how's it going to mimic the starling? Um, well, let's have a look at the fabric. Some of you may recognise this from my first fabric haul. It's a very very plain 
matte silk not too much shine to it a little bit of shine but not not huge amounts um not, maybe has a slightly goldy shot through it but it really is a reasonably a reasonably plain chocolate brown and i thought that would make a good good fabric for the body of the corset to just basically mimic the the color of the style now starlings are a bit darker than that but this is an interpretation so i'm not going to get too upset but i'm not slavishly sticking like that's not the right color that's it everything everybody back go home no no this is an like i said it's an interpretation on the thing so that's that fabric I had a thought to think about the flossing um, there are many videos out there on the different types of flossing that you can do for the corset ends and I decided to keep that simple if we have a look at the styling up close you'll see that the ends of the feathers are tipped with like white just a, like a white half moon and I thought that actually just doing that top and bottom would keep it simple for me which means I you know I can't make mistakes, I can't hide behind them, but it's not going to be too complicated compared to the last one. Um, but it actually is again bring is pulling in the feathers of the of the bird. And then I have a think thought about we'll see about this one, but doing some form of lattice work embroidery on parts of the cording. Um, and that's to kind of represent a little bit weird, but to represent the hollow bones of the birds. If you have a look inside, what a bird's bone looks like, it's honeycombed, it's crisscrossed, and, and everything. That's what makes them so light. That's what allows them to fly. Um, is those basically those hollow bones? So I thought if I could, again, I'll begin pulling in another aspect of birds and the uh, sort of general structure of it, of them, not it. Um, but what my um, piers de resistance um, for this course it will be will be to create feathers from um, now I don't know quite whether this is going to be from silk thread or it's going to be from embroidery floss I'm not sure that will be another video don't don't worry, I should be taking you along on that journey. Um, and I, years ago, I discovered uh, a blog post on Pinterest. I'll link it below um, of how to make feathers from florist wire, embroidery floss, starch, and PVA glue. And at the time, I was like, I needed to do something creative. I just wasn't wasn't necessarily in a great headspace. I just needed to try and do something, and I gave it a go and it worked i again overly complicated it by using very fine cotton don't don't ever do that but that idea always stuck with me um, and what i'm hoping to be able to do is to basically get different colors that represent the colors of the feathers and just have like almost like feather scales just, just, just trust me on that one it should work it should work. Um, I, I originally thought about maybe just embroidering the colours on, and I've been playing around with some embroidery uh, stitches, and I even came up with, the, I think, the leaf stitch, which was looking quite good. But then I thought, it's going to look a bit flat, because you basically begin to have just the main colour, then a little bit of the colour underneath, and the tiny little bit of the colour underneath that. And I wanted it to be a little bit more a bit more 3D. This is not a corset that's ever going to be worn outside so this is a little bit fantasy now but it's still pulling in what it is about the starling that I wanted to represent and through its iridescence. Now I'm really hoping that I can do this with silk thread because I think silk's got a lovely lustrous sheen that you want to kind of represent the, the iridescence but I need to make sure that the starch and the PVA solution I need to bathe it in won't dull it. So like I said, that'll be another video. That'll be in a video within this series of experimenting with different types of um, threads to see what works and how I can best um, visually represent what it is I'm trying to, trying to achieve. So ideally, if this works, 
there will be feathers all along the front. I'm not going to do the back because that would be silly. Um, but all along the front, so three layers of feathers sticking 3D out on off the top of the corset. Um, I don't know what we're going to be doing about lacing. I will put a bit of lacing on because what a corset without lacing is not a corset in my opinion. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I, I think that's going to be one of the last things I really think about. Um, and so it was like, yeah, but there will be something there. Um, so how am I going to make this corset? Well, this book gives you step by step on how to create the pattern, not how to sew it together, not you know how what what how the thick the bone should be, whether it should be spiral, whether it should be fake baleen. It doesn't do any of that. What it does is it gives you the step by step guide on how to draft the initial pattern to your body measurement, and then how to then scale that to create the corset that you'll see in the picture. Now I've already done my basic body block from here. I did that uh, two, oh, blimey, two years ago. That's so depressing. Um, so I've already made all of that. I've got the basics. Now I could have just bought a corset pattern online. There are many, many out there. You know, I, I keep hearing Truly Victorian mentioned all the time, but I, I don't know what times I keep saying this. My body shape is a little bit, um, more Ruben, Rubens like, Ruben esque, I think is the expression. Um, and the last corset I made for my previous competition entry, rather than the back panels just being nice and straight like that, they went nice and straight until halfway and then they came in. So basically, <laughs> it was quite an extreme shape just to get a parallel shape. Um, and I might as well just give myself a little bit extra help by if I take it from my personal body block from the off then I've got a better chance I don't have to do too much in the way of shaping to get it to look how it should do with the parallel back and the nicely nicely fitted um, curves and, and everything like that so what am I going to make with it well no respectable Victorian lady would be seen without wearing a chemise and a pair of bloomers. Um, and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. I've got the uh, the Voice of Fashion uh, Christmas present. Uh, I've already used it once before. I think I used it for my competition entry from two years ago. Um, but I used several books during that. And I didn't use this particular pattern for my bloomers that time. <laughs> So we should be making a pair of ladies' drawers. It's technically from a pattern from 18, 1901, but come on, knickers and knickers and knickers. Um, so I'll be following that particular pattern there. Um, I have followed, like I said, I've had used this book before and I've got the apportioning rulers that I will need, um, which are these it's an ingenious system I, I can't believe it this was brilliant um I'll, when i go through the the making of this i will go talk about it in more detail i'm not going to talk about it now um but yes i'm making a pair of drawers from here and um and this matching chemise you know keep it simple um and that will be my competition entry and i've got this lovely cotton chocolate cover coloured cotton which I think again would look really nice slightly contrasting so you won't lose you can see even in this light you can see there's a difference and with all the embellishment it will look very nice so the the idea of the coloured co chocolate coloured cotton um, is again to represent the bird's body as a whole which one's coming back now? Oh, it sounds like Bertie. Hey, about that? Anyway, um, to represent the bird as a whole, and I quite like the idea of the bloomers because birds often have um, on their legs their feathers come down, and then they've just got like the little spindly legs sticking out the bottom like that kind of. In my mind, that's represented by the bloomers. So I am creating almost like a fancy dress um, out of very little. Um, 
and so that's my plan now I had thought about maybe making a mask or something like that as well I don't know that is really going to be if I've got absolutely everything done to the best of my ability and maybe a little bit more then maybe I'll do a mask but I need to be realistic here I burnt myself out a little bit for the competition last time and I don't want to do that again of what I'm doing may sound simple chemise blingers corset but that's a lot um I'm, like I said I need to do the the corset from scratch I need to do main mock-ups I'd hope not too many but you never know um so that's going to be a lot of uh, mocking up I need to get me I need to kind of create some lacing tape I need to create um a bone um a busk tape as well so i'd have to keep you know sewing that in and out um because the last course i made i think i made about six mock-ups in the end oh my god oh good lord that was too much so i need to do some of that stuff so how's this all going to work so this will be the first video um this will be my inspiration video and then we're going to go through and chart the different aspects of my journey so i think the next i don't know what my next video is going to be but let's be honest but the videos will be the video around the bloomers and the chemise so the the mocking up um we'll talk about how we apportion how it all works i'm hoping that i should only really need to make one mock-up of both just because i just need to know it's going to fit around my waist um, it's going to fit around my hips it's going to fit around my bust so we're going to keep the mock-ups reasonably simple then there'll obviously be the, the main the main making of in the chocolate cotton then there will be the mammoth that will be the corset so it will be doing the drafting it will be doing at least one mock-up i'm not going to go too much into mock-ups because they can be interesting but it can also be really boring and uh, you know it's going to be quite stressful for me so there'll be at least one mock-up and then there will be the making of the corset itself and uh, maybe a bit of flossing as well but obviously this is a competition entry i'm not gonna i'm not gonna show it all um it will be kept under wraps until it's ready to go um, and then we will be having the experiments in the silk threads um working out what works and what doesn't and that'll be a little bit of a tutorial as well because it's actually quite a fun little uh craft project to do um, Thank you. Um, director says action. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do once the competition, before the competition goes live, I'm going to unlist all these videos um, because I don't think it's fair. It's a little bit. I've got a YouTube channel now, um, and part of the reason why I had the YouTube channel was because I wanted to do this. I wanted to, to document my journey of making this comp um, competition entry. Um, and but that gives me a little bit maybe an unfair advantage if that I could talk about more about my construction methods um, I could talk about my fabrics more and all of that and you actually only get 250 words to talk about that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all these videos down I'm going to make a montage for, of a minute which is allowed as part of the competition entry and you will see me wearing the outfit and I'll probably try and put a few snippets of um, what I've done so you can that, so I can kind of chart my story as I go but that all these videos will disappear when the competition goes live once the competition is closed and the votes are done all the videos will come back up again so hopefully that's something that will interest you if not please don't worry I will not be offended um, but if you are please come and join me you know every time you're here Beethoven's Pastoral it'll be this little project um the entries need to be in in february 2023 so i've got plenty of time <laughs> some might say too much time um but let's see how i go this has been a crazy cat lady Productions. you've been watching an unoriginal idea take care guys have a good evening bye bye King. put a piece of paper
Oh. Never film after work after dinner. Just don't do it.